All right, now, this is a doozy. It's a good one. Let's look at this problem. We've got a piston cylinder device that has stops right here. Uh, so we'll talk about that. Pist piston cylinder device initially contains air at 150 kPa and 27 degrees C. This state, the piston is resting on a pair of stops, and the volume is 400 liters. The mass is such that it doesn't move until the pressure gets all the way up to 350. So it stays here at a pressure of 150 200, 250, we keep on pumping heat, 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 heat. The pressure is increasing, but it is not moving. Um, but then, once it gets to a pressure of 350 kPa, is required to move it, the air is now heated until the volume has doubled. So, so it has moved, uh, and it has doubled. Determine the final temperature and the work done by the air. So this is kind of a, a two-step process. If we were to look at this on a PV diagram we'd start down here at state one at 150 kPa at 400 liters and we pump more and more heat into it but it's not moving it's it's not enough pressure to move it with these stops here it's almost like it's going from state one to state two at the same volume but it's increasing pressure then it gets to 350 then it becomes a constant pressure. So this is kind of a two-step process right here from state one to state two and state two to state three. So we could, we could and we might want to kind of break it up into two different processes. But if we do think about it from state one to state three, if we do think about this, from state 1 to state 3, then, uh, you know, let's think about this uh, heat, our, our conservation of energy equation, Q plus W uh, for a closed system equals delta E. Uh, should this delta E be H or should it be U? Well, is it a constant pressure process? Not completely constant pressure. Is it a constant volume? Not completely constant volume. So if it is some other process other than a constant pressure or a constant volume then then what do we do we say q plus w uh, equals delta u and we do add the boundary work so we have q plus w plus boundary work equals delta u all right q plus w plus boundary work equals delta u all right so that's the that's the main equation we're going to use all right, but uh, let's think about all this stuff that we've got. Find the final temperature. So, we know these pressures, we know these volumes at every state, correct? We know the pressure at every state, we know the volume at every state. Could we find the temperature at the final state? Well, it's an ideal, if this is air, we're always going to assume air is an ideal gas in this equation. Uh, P1 V1 over T1, if this is a closed system, equals P2 V2 over T2, P3 V3 over T3. And if we know the pressure and volume and temperature at the first state and the pressure and volume at the second state, we can find the temperature at the third state. So we're actually just going to use PV equals RT, uh, MRT, to find um, the temperature uh, before we get into our equation right here. Okay, so uh, the initial pressure, 150 kPa. The initial volume, 0.4 meters cubed. We could leave that one as liters as long as the left-hand side of my equation agrees with the right-hand side of my equation. The temperature, this one has to be in Kelvin. Equals the final temperature, 350 kPa. The final temperature, 0.8 meters cubed. The final temperature, that's what I'm solving for. I would get T3, 1,400 Kelvin. Okay, so it really, really increases in temperature, uh, but that's fine. So because it was an ideal gas and it was a closed system, and because I knew all the pressures and volumes and temperatures, then I can find the temperature of state 3, not even worrying about the temperature. I don't think it asked for the temperature at state 2. Okay, but part B, the work done by the air. That, that is the boundary work. Right, that is the boundary work. So part B, we're asking for the boundary work. 
Uh, well, what's the boundary work from one to two? Nothing. What's the boundary work from two to three? Uh, the boundary work is this, this area under the curve. No boundary work uh, while, while it's resting on these stops and there's no change in volume. There's no boundary. The boundary is not moving. Right? This is moving boundary work. So the boundary is not moving. So there's no boundary work from one to two. But from two to three, uh, it's just the area under that. It is just uh, pressure times change in volume. Uh, the pressure, 350 kPa. Uh, the change in volume is, you know, 800 minus 400 or 0.8 minus, you know, it's 0.4 meters cubed. Uh, 140 kPa meter cubed is a kilojoule right there. So the boundary work done by the air, by the air, this is expansion, this is work out, uh, but, but, you know, we'll just leave it right here. But I want to remind myself, this is work out. This is work done by the air because I might need to use it in just a little bit. Okay, so now I get to the heart of my problem, which is my conservation of energy because I want to find the Q. I want to find the Q in, right? The Q that we need to pump in here. All right, so the Q... Then we need to pump in plus any work done plus any boundary work equals delta u. Okay? The q, that's what we're looking for. So we need to know everything else. Is there any other work other than a boundary work? Is there a paddle wheel? Is there a current? Is there anything that it mentions? No, there's no work except for boundary work. All right, what is the boundary work? It's 140 work out. It's 140 work out. So negative 140 kilojoules. And here, this is delta U. So let's call this M delta lowercase u. M delta lowercase u. Do I know the M? No. It didn't tell me the M, but it told me enough information that I think we can find the M. This is air. We can assume air is an ideal gas. PV capital P, capital V, equals MRT, okay? The pressure, let me see here, pressure 150 kPa, the volume 0.4. So I could look at one, I could look at two, I could look at three. I, I should still get the same mass, right? I should still get the same mass. I'm looking at one. So pressure one, volume one, uh, the R for air, 0.287 kPa meter cubed per kilogram K. That's in table A1. If we didn't know, the temperature at 1 was 273, uh, but it needs to be in Kelvin. It needs to be in Kelvin. So I've got a mass of 0.69686 kilograms. All right, there we go. So now I've got this. All right, so what is delta U? I actually have two options. I have two options. I could use property tables or I could use C, let's see, da, 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 CV delta T. Property tables or CV delta T. I might do both to double check my answer just to show you how you can do both. Uh, but since we're in the specific heat, you know, ch chapter, uh, let's use CV delta T. All right, so. All right, yeah, Q minus 140 kilojoules equals 0.69686 kilograms. CV, I need the CV for air. At what temperature? Well, it's going from, okay, and, and also, just to reiterate, this is not from just one to two or just two to three. This is from one to three. This is from one to three. Okay, because from one to three, it's not just a constant pressure process. It's not just a constant volume process. It's some weird other process. So if it's some other process, then Q plus W plus boundary work, you know, we have boundary work and delta U. Anyway, this from one to three. So this is, you know, U3 minus U1. This is T3 minus T1. This is 1,400 to 300. So let's find the air. Um, the air, let's see, the average 1,400 and 300 
uh, divided by 2 at 850. So let's find the CV of air at T average, which is 850 Kelvin. Let's go to our uh, property tables. Table, let's see, we are in all right here. That's just at 300. But if we can, yeah, let's look at this. Let's look at temperature of 850. We have to interpolate. You, you see, it's not exactly interpolating if it's halfway in between. If it's halfway in between, it's just going to be the average of 0.812 and 0.834, right? Because the average of 900 and 800. So that's a shortcut. Don't have to interpolate if it's halfway in between. Oh, don't know what happened there. You don't have to interpolate if it's halfway in between those values. And so halfway in between... Uh, would have been 0.823 uh, the units right there are sorry let's go back to uh, property tables okay I lost everything here we go uh, 0.812 and 0.834 the average is 0.823 kilojoules per kilogram K kilojoules per kilogram K And then the delta T was 1,400 minus 1,300, 1,100 K. I would get a Q of positive 767. No, so, sorry, 771. 771 kilojoules. All right. And I would stop right there, box it, and that's my final answer. But just to just kind of double check. I used specific heat. What if I'd used the property tables? I think I could find U3 minus uh, U1. Q minus 140 kilojoules would be mass 0.69686 kilogram. And now I'm going to do U3 minus U1. U3. U3. Well, we're looking at air. We're looking at table A. 17 it's only by temperature so the 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 um u value at 1400 minus the u value at 300 so let's go to property tables table a 17 uh a 17 yeah for air the uh u value at 1400 111 point or uh, 1113.52 and the U value at 300 214.07 so let's use those values let's see how far off our answer 1113.52 minus 214.07 I would have gotten a Q value of 767 kilojoules pretty close pretty close all right, let's take a step back and look at what we did. Let's take a step back and look at what we did. All right, sometimes to find temperatures for ideal gases, if we know a lot of pressures and volumes and temperatures, then P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2, P3, V3 over T3. All right. To find boundary work for any process, just look back at all those different processes. This one was really two processes in one. It was a constant uh, constant volume process, which has no boundary work, and then from two to three, a constant pressure process. And the boundary work for a constant pressure process is P times delta V. So that was 140 kilojoules of work out, work done by our system. And then for part C, to find the Q, we go to conservation of energy. Um, I had both boundary work and delta U in my equation. Why? Because from 1 to 3, it's not a simple constant pressure process. It's not a con simple constant volume. It's not a simple you know, polytropic process. Uh, when it's some weird other process that you don't know, then have boundary work on one side and delta U on the other side. Boundary work on one side and delta U on the other side. Delta U is M delta U. I got M by PV equals MRT. I got delta U by either the CP delta T or... U3 minus U1 from the property tables. All right. There you go.